Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a video review. And for this re review, I'm going to be taking a look at High Five Rush, the new game from Tango Game Works and Bethesda, along with Microsoft Game Studios for the Xbox Series um, X and S. This is being played on the Series S, though, VI Game Pass, though. It is worth pointing out the game is also available on PC VI Steam. And for parents out there, it is worth pointing out that High Five Rush is rated um, teen for teens, ages 13 and up, by the ESRB uh, rating system. One of the interesting surprises we got when we had the Xbox Developers Direct back in, in January earlier this year, though, was Hi-Fi Rush, a game that was shadow dropped by um, Bethesda and Tango Gameworks, the same studio that is known for creating the Evil Within 1 and 2, and of course, um, Ghostwire Tokyo, though. So to have this game kind of shadow dropped on us was kind of interesting in a way because no one really that kind of surprised a lot of people and when the game was officially shown though it certainly got a lot of buzz and everything like that it's a game that is somewhat different than what um tango game works is known for which is basically most of the games of either like a horror like evil within is or something with a horror atmosphere like ghostwire tokyo though with that well now having spent several times with um hi-fi rush i honestly have to say that I definitely do enjoy this game for a lot of reasons as someone who enjoys platforming and combat um, to be exact. There are some little, there is one little hiccup that I have with the game, but it's definitely one that I definitely would recommend those try out, especially if you're into platforming or if you have Game Pass and all. So why don't we get started with the pros and cons, and we'll start off with the pros. And the first one has to do with um, the visuals. And I will say that the game uh, visually um, definitely looks good, though. Now, a lot of people like, in terms of, in a, or shall I say, in a day, in an era where we see a lot of these big budget AAA type of games and all it's nice to see several developers every now and then develop a game where it has a unique art style and that is true sometimes a game with a unique art style can get away with not have make up for the lack of graphical bells and whistles and high five rush um has that though in fact the art style of the game is kind of feels like a mixture between games like um sunset overdrive or the jet set radio games though to even going as far as saying cartoons that you see on Nickelodeon like Avatar The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra to Netflix's Voltron The Legendary Defender or even um, The Dragon Prince though. So the art style is definitely um, unique and in, in its own way and all and that certainly is a very um, good thing though for High Five Rush and I definitely like the art style um, to the game and all. The next thing I do want to talk about is the gameplay and the gameplay is actually pretty fun to me though. For me though, the gameplay kind of feels like a mixture of several different games that I remember during like the PS2 eras, whether it's games like Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, or even going as far as saying like games like Maximo, Ghosts of Glory, or Maximo, um, the, Ar the Army of Zen though. And you kind of get that with the combat though. It, though I will admit the combat definitely is more in line with um, I would say more in line with Ratchet and Clank though, but you definitely get a little bit, but you definitely get a little bit of those other games I mentioned though. To the combat, which is very, very similar to those who have played games like say, the Devil May Cry series, or even some of Platinum's games, though, whether it's the Bayonetta series or say Astro Chain for that matter though. So if you're familiar with those type of games though, you'll feel right at home uh, with the gameplay though. Uh, the interesting thing that is that it follows with a rhythm and you kind of have to follow with to the beat of the music of the game though. This is sort of a rhythm like brawler or rhythm like hack and slash to a certain extent and if you time it correctly you could do a lot of damage to um, the enemies and all. So it's a really neat idea for the combat though and I definitely like the PS2 era mixture of some of the game Play to some of the gameplay that um, Platinum is well known for. One other thing to point out is that you do also have the ability to switch to three different characters that will um, that you'll unlock throughout the game. Though um, Peppermint, whose arm was like this laser, can be used to unlock not only um, certain like platforms and all, but can also take out enemies' shields if they have like a force field or something like that. There's another character, um, I forgot his name um, to be exactly, but he has the ability to break, you know, heavy objects and shields and all. 
And Corsa, if I'm saying her name correctly, who you unlock after you beat her, has the ability to sort of like stun enemies, to even um, go into areas that are blocked by fire and all. So they come into play as in terms of ranging from the combat side to unlocking like maybe hidden secrets throughout um, the levels and all. So from a gameplay perspective, it's definitely um, fun though. And last but not least, as far as this going on the series on the Xbox Series S goes, um, the game runs pretty well on the um, Xbox Series S. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's not going to have the exact bells and whistles as the Xbox Series X or the PC does, but visually it still looks fine. As I said, sometimes an art style can make up for any graphical bells and whistles. And the game, for the majority of the time, based on my time playing playing it though does maintain a good um, 60 frames per second. And that's definitely not a bad thing for um, a game like this. So as far as it running on the Xbox Series S goes, um, it runs pretty well on it though. And I think that's um, really good in a time when we see some developers out there, mostly third party developers, but a time when we're seeing some developers who are either trash talking the Series S or seem to have are struggling to try to bring their games to run properly on the Series S, considering the fact that the Series S is a capable system, though. You just got to remember, you're not running on something that is at 4K or anything like that. But in either case, though, um, it runs pretty well on the Series S. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two, which is the con. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my video review of High Five Rush for the um, Xbox Series X and S. Game's also available on PC and Game Pass as well. Um, so now that I gave you the pros, why don't we get started with the cons? And there really is only two cons I could think of though. Um, the first one I do want to talk about is sort of the combat. Now, as I mentioned in the pros though, I still think the combat is fun and enjoyable and everything like that. And I still um, stand behind that and though. But at the same time, though, I will admit, though, the game does have a little bit of a learning curve with the combat. And some of it does have to do with timing your um, attacks to your parries to basically the rhythm and the beat of the music um, in the game, though. And that might be difficult for some folks out there. Now, there are so some ways that they can help you, though. Um, if you push one of the buttons on your controller, though, you have the option of turning on this meter that basically goes with the beat to the music of the game, and that can help you sort of like time it and everything like that. So it does help to some degree, but I don't deny the fact that the game does have a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to um, some of the combat, to some of the parry, to even some of the platforming in the game though, that also goes with the rhythm as well. Although to be fair though, not all of the platforming is like that at all. Some are like that though, some aren't though. And it is worth pointing out that while Hi-Fi Rush does have a learning curve, I don't think it's as bad as say like the Wonderful 101 was on the Wii U or when that eventually got ported over to other systems like PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch though, where you had to draw like shapes and designs in order to, for a certain character to do a certain move or anything like that though. So I would say the learning curve isn't as bad as that kind of game, don't get me wrong. I enjoy Wonderful 101, but I don't deny the learning curve on that one though. But I cannot deny High Five Rush does have somewhat of a learning curve and that might turn some folks off. I don't think it will turn everyone off, but it might turn some folks off if you have a hard time timing your attacks or doing a parry, you know, timing it though. I'm kind of mixed when it comes to parry in terms of combat to be exact. So yeah, there is sort of, sort of a bit of a uh, learning curve to some of the gameplay mechanics in um, High Five Rush. But like I said, I don't think it's as awful as some people are making some people might make it sound like it is though. And last but not least is there is an option in the game that I thought that I think seems stupid, but I can understand some of the reasons behind it though. And that is a streamer option. For those who are not familiar though, the game does have licensed music in here, ranging from, you know, Nine Inch Nails to the Black Keys and all. And 
Don't get me wrong, I like some of the choice of music that they made into the game though. I just think to some extent it's a little ridiculous that they have like the streamer option. I get the reason why to turn off the music for those who are planning to stream the game or show um, some gameplay footage for fear of the possibility of, you know, your video being content and ID on YouTube and everything like that, though. But it, to me, at the same time, I feel it's a little ridiculous they added this option. And it's really kind of sad to a way because it just shows how easily our copyright system can be very much abused and so forth, though. So I get the reason behind the idea of a streamer option, though, but I, I think personally, and this is just my opinion on this one, I think it's kind of stupid to a certain extent, though, but I get the reason why they added this option, for, especially for those who are worried about any of the people who, you know, license music or own the rights to music from certain bands or anything like that, the fear of the possibility of getting a copyright claim or content ID on YouTube and everything like that. So I kind of get the reason um, behind that, but I still think it's kind of ridiculous though. Um, overall though, I definitely am enjoying Hi-Fi Rush and it's definitely, it's a good game on the Xbox Series S and S or Game Pass for that matter. And it's certainly a great start for the Xbox and Microsoft for 2023 though. At its best though, the visuals of the game look great, art style, Definitely looks nice to it though. The gameplay is fun. A mixture of PS2 era type games of combat and platform to the kind of game Platinum is known for. And as far as it running on the Series S though, it runs pretty well on the Series S. And that certainly isn't a bad thing in any way. At its worst, however, is that there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to the gameplay because it's sort of a rhythm and you kind of have to time your attacks to some of your jumps. Um, to even some of your parries though. So there is a little bit of a learning curve with, with it though, but like I mentioned, not as bad as it was in the wonderful 101. And while I understand the reason behind the streamer option though, I think it's a bit ridiculous that this option is available in the first place. And it kind of highlights the problem with our copyright laws um, in general. But either way though, High Five Rush is definitely one I would recommend for those who have an Xbox system or for those who have a game who have Game Pass and want to try this game out before they decide to buy it, though, um, I'm kind of impressed with um, Tango Games on um, work dropping a game like this. Though, it's nice to see smaller titles from these developers every now and then. Similar to what my thought with Obsidian with um, Pendiment, though, I am if, <clears throat> excuse me. I definitely like Tango GameWorks um, doing um, a game like this, though, and I wouldn't mind seeing some of these smaller titles every now and then. On, onto the Game Pass service in general though. Don't get me wrong, I want to see some big, I'm not against big budget AAA type experience on Game Pass though. I would love to see from Tango Gameworks um, an Evil Within 3 or a sequel to Ghostwire Tokyo though. But at the same time, I'm not opposed to having these smaller titles or new IPs on Game Pass or on Xbox systems um, either though. So I definitely enjoy this type of title though. I would be down for a sequel to High Five Rush if that ever happens or anything like that. And I def this is game one game I definitely recommend for those who has an Xbox Series X and S or PC or if you have um, Game Pass um, in general though. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes my video review of High Five Rush for the Xbox Series X and S. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about High Five Rush though? Are you glad that Tango Gameworks did a good did a good job with this game though? Do you like these kind of smaller titles? And would you like to see more of these? Do you think they should do more of these smaller titles on Game Pass? Um, in general, though, um, would you prefer them to do another, or would you prefer them to do another sequel to like, like an Evil Within 3 or Ghostwire Tokyo 2, um, to be exact, though? Um, do you like seeing some of these titles on Game Pass, or do you prefer more like the big budget AAA titles you rather see on Game Pass and all? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any, video, any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if 
you want to and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon or even Steam Labs. Links will be in the description of this video assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!